fellow sniffers, flighters, and hatchlings. My name is Marlene McCohen. And I'm Tracy. And this is Rocky. Oh, you came into frame for the introduction. How amazing. And who's that, Tracy? This is Leo. And we may have some other visitors today, but before we do, we want to welcome you to Parrot Chop Chef. Chef. In this episode, we're going to be making a spaghetti squash kale bolt for your birds. But to don't forget to stay till the end of the episode to see how we turn this dish for your birds into something completely different and an amazing meal for you. That's what Tracy's here for. You can check her out on Results with Tracy on Instagram. Tracy has been an amazing influence on me and changed my eating habits and made me much healthier and happier. So I thought, who better to have on this show and partner with than my best friend Tracy? So here we go. Tracy, what are we doing today? Okay, so today we are gonna do the kale bowl. And so what I've already done, just cause it's, it's a little bit messy, I took the spaghetti squash, this is the raw side, cut it in half, and I, for the birds, scraped out the insides and the seeds in a spaghetti squash are totally safe for birds to eat. So this is what it looks like when you scrape it out. Ooh, nice. So what's next, Tracy? Broccoli. Okay. We've also pre-chopped it. Wow, you pre-chopped the broccoli? Isn't that like cheating? Shouldn't you be like chopping up this broccoli? What if I don't know how to chop broccoli? If you don't know how to chop broccoli, grab a knife, chop it up. This is the broccoli that is here to show you before we chopped it. But I want to tell you guys something actually in like, a secret. We bought chopped broccoli. <laughs> okay, so that's just something you could do. I, the reason I want to let you guys in on the secrets is clearly because I don't want to make anything hard for you. This shouldn't be so difficult. If you need to go buy organic or non-organic or whatever you can to make it easier for you, this is chopped. Even if it says wash, make sure you wash it yourself. We're also not really following any particular order because it's all getting mixed. So I'm gonna go with spinach next. Are you gonna be chopping the spinach? Yes. Ooh, can I help you chop the spinach? Just like, I wanna see if I enjoy this at all. Okay. Oh! Put your hand oh, on. Okay. Put your hand on top. Why? Because you wanna, don't wanna chop off your hand. Yeah, what are you doing? Why are you attacking it? I don't know, be try nice to get it. Be nice to your food and your food is nice to you. Oh, really? Listen, okay, let's do okay. it together. Okay. Hello, I am Marlene McCoy and I am chopping spinach. You know what, I actually, I don't Wait, like well, the I feeling I of the knife on my hand here because it's just too much pressure for my hand. Wow. <laughs> and also, as I learned last episode, if you chop spinach too finely, it becomes wilted. Correct? Right yes, now? yes, yes. Yes, right it does. It gets a weird bruise. That is the professional term. I gotta say, this looks really good. It's pretty, right? Yeah, this is really pretty. It's very green. Okay, get the chopping the kale. You want me to like tell you if you're doing it wrong? I think this other knife is here for me. And should I get my own cutting board? All right. Oh, more? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I prepared it for you. <laughs> I don't know, you know, like some carrot. And I knew. Yeah, Brando, some carrot. We got this like colorful medley carrot mix. Why do we like color? Because it's aesthetically pleasing for the birds. I find okay. that birds prefer things that are yellow, especially parrots, because a lot of the fruits that they eat in the wild, yellow signifies ripeness. <gasps> hey, this is yellow. It's cool, right? Can the birds have the circles? What do you mean by that? Like this is a circle. So what, you think they only eat squares? Or what's the whole question there? I didn't know if I need to make it smaller for them. Oh, that's actually a good question. If I had a cockatiel or maybe a parakeet, you would want to chop these up a lot more. Yeah, and um, because cockatiels and parakeets, they don't really, can't really pick up their food. They got to rely on what's in the bowl. So the more finely chopped, like this broccoli, that's like perfect for them. This is looking really good. Yeah, right? I think also cooking should be fun. So if you are in the mood to make something and you can choose purple carrots and yellow carrots versus just the regular orange, I mean, do that. It might motivate you a little bit, a little good Instagram photos. 
Tracy, it looks like you just added something without notifying the oh. audience about it. What is that? Raw pumpkin seeds. This is tarragon. I already prepared it by pulling at like the tarragon leaves and the dill and all that little part we're gonna use off of the stem. And I like to chop it all together because uh, it just combines the flavors. I was gonna say a lot of chopping going on here, but I mean, that's what you're doing for carrots. Um, is there a show called Parrot Chop Chef? Wow. So now we've added the herbs, and now we still have more herbs. Well, we have <laughs> herb, we have another herb, basil. And we also found these really cute, edible, safe for everyone flowers. Uh, you might find them in your garden. Karen, do you mind? Marigolds, you can find them in your garden. Don't pick them from someone else's garden because why is that bad? Okay, so if you wanna add any flowers for garnish, make sure you really do your research on what flowers are good for birds and acceptable, but also make sure that none of it comes from a garden that is treated with chemicals. So now that we have everything in the bowl, can I do the mixing? Yes. Let me do that. Ooh, what's that, squash? Mm -hmm. So now we're tossing the mix. Oh my God, it looks so beautiful. Tracy's gonna decide if I mixed it up enough. And then for the fun part, for your birds, we are bringing back the squash and we're making this squash bowl. So this is your spaghetti squash kale bowl, essentially. Yay, look at this. Pack it in there. Oh, pack it in? Yeah. This is our final product for the birds, which is <laughs> a spaghetti squash kale bowl, which Brando just loves. And I'm really excited to see how the birds are gonna try it. But check it out, this is not over yet. We're gonna show you how to change this up a little bit and make it an amazing meal for you. Going through our spaghetti squash kale bowl, Tracy's gonna tell us what she did to prepare the other side of it to turn it into an amazing healthy meal for you. So I baked the other half at 400 degrees for 30 minutes with a little bit of olive oil, salt, pepper. And then when it came out of the oven, I scraped it as I did with that one. You just get it like this. So now what are we gonna do with this, Tracy? We're gonna take this, which acts kind of like a pasta, spaghetti squash, we're gonna add it to the mix and we're gonna saute it up. Okay, so let's do that. Can I just dump this in yeah. right now? Yeah. Ooh, that's exciting. So this is gonna be like a spaghetti squash. Saute fun in this. I don't know what this is gonna be. Let's look at it. So we're gonna mix it up. So all of these vegetables and herbs saute really nicely. Yeah, and we'll probably just add some, we'll saute it in olive oil. So it's not that you can't feed what we're about to make to the birds but it's always best to feed your birds in the most raw form without the olive oil and without all of those things. So we're making things a little more exciting where you can accomplish two things in one. Even though we're about to saute this for ourselves, I want you guys to notice that we do not use any nonstick or any Teflon pans or any imposter Teflon pans. So you always wanna make sure your pans are ceramic, stainless steel, or iron cast pans. I should mention this is also which you probably figured out, vegan and low carb. Okay, so we already added the olive oil to the pan. And now we have our mix. And we're just going to kind of just scoop it, I think, into the pan. We heated up the olive oil. 
vegetables, like all the vegetables here, they've cooked down. So it looks like a lot, but it's gonna, the longer you cook them, they cook down. We don't wanna cook it for so long because we're not, we're still kind of trying to keep shape, but we do want to just get everything nice and toasty. You can also drizzle some olive oil in your mix before you add it to the pan, and that way kind of keeps it kind of coated as you're adding. And just keep mixing it as you're cooking it over medium heat. There's not like a specific time that you should cook this. It's not like cook for 15. It's your preference. I am choosing to cook it until I see that everything has kind of just been almost at the point where it starts to like shrink in size. I'm kind of like pressing in and separating the chunks as I go. And I'm just gonna turn down the heat a little bit because we're near the end. The more vibrant the food is that you eat, the like, the more colorful it is, uh, the darker the greens. It's a good trick to know that the, the darker the greens, the healthier the means. <laughs> All right. Now, the pan is still hot, so when you turn the fire off, it's still, at a temperature that's slightly cooking it. So you could just stir it a little bit more, but turn off the heat when you feel like you've reached a point of readiness. If you like feta, you could add a little feta once you put it on your plate, and then the warmth will kind of melt the feta. I know we added goat cheese to our salad last time. That's also a great cheese step. <laughs> okay, Marla, it's ready. Oh my God, that looks so good. So shall we try it? Yeah, let's try it. Okay. our full attention. Mm, smells good. Mm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Really impressive. To sum it up, guys, we have just made a spaghetti squash kale bowl and then fed it to our birds who clearly enjoyed it and then turned it into a spaghetti squash saute for ourselves and it's amazing. I wouldn't lie to you guys, you would see it on my face. I wouldn't be able to eat it. I will say for those of you who like cheese and are not avoiding dairy, some goat cheese added to it would make it mind-blowingly great. You can also spice it up a little bit with a few more spices here and there if you like to do that. I actually loved it like this. If you wanna make it spicy, you could add a little bit of curry. Um, that's actually my forte, believe it or not. Right, Tracy? Yes. That is my forte. That is it for today. So let us know in the comments what you would like to see us make next. And also what your favorite part of this video is. Don't forget to go back and check out our last recipe video. And also, I hope you guys are looking forward to the next one because we are ready to make some exciting meals for your birds and then turn it into something really cool for you. We want to thank you for watching Parrot Chop Chef. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you won't miss out on an exciting meal for you and your bird. We love you guys so much. Bye. Bye. <laughs>